Well, good morning everyone and welcome once again to Ed's Orchids. Just for a change, I thought I would do this from the house and put the uh, angraecums on, uh, on the table. So, uh, here we are. Now this one is Angraecum Crestwood, tomorrow's star. A big, big plant. Made from uh, a big cross. Uh, it was made from... Uh, Hibernium, which is a huge plant, uh, crossed to uh, Sesquipedale, which gave uh, Angraecum vecchii. Suppose you've all heard of that one. Now, vecchii uh, generally grows mm, with its uh, its flowers uh, sort of uh, pointing downwards. So it was crossed back to uh, Sesquipedale which uh, improved this and the flowers now grow you know where people could see them properly now i've grown this in a pot and if i have my time to come over again i will grow these in baskets because they are uh, epiphyte plants even though of the size they do grow as epiphytes on trees or on rocks uh, in the wild and greycons can be found sort of uh, mainly Madagascar, but they can go to the Reunion Islands and even over to Africa. There's many, many species of them and lots we, we never see or never hear of. Uh, this has produced a nice cakey here. It's quite a big plant, big enough to virtually flower itself now. And this one has two spikes on. I neglected this over uh, over the summer with uh, not feeding and just leaving it out in the rain and, and leaving so it's only got two spikes on this year let's see if I can close up to them there's one just with two buds on and there's the other just with two buds on but the reason I say why I would put these in baskets is because uh, as you can see this one first grew in a pot and that's the original stalk we'll come round to which is that one that's in a pot which is placed in a pot which in a pot again because these hate the roots disturbing if you disturb the roots on angraecums or any angraecum then uh, it can put them back five years before they'll flower again massive root systems as you can see there at that side around here they just grow all over all over the place and the thing is uh, some people give them a winter rest but i think if they've got green tips on the roots which these have then i wouldn't give them a winter rest i would just keep them growing all year you can see where the uh, the roots are now coming out from high up on the uh, high up on the plant. And they're not really an indoor plant unless you've got uh, plenty of room. Another thing to say about uh, angraecums is if you find a lot of yellowing on these leaves here, you know, just where they join the base. If you look inside, you'll probably find they've got mealybug in which they're very, very prone to. So watch out for that yellow. Uh, not much more I can say about this, but uh, it should have uh, four spikes on this, but uh, with me not looking after it properly, it's only got two on and four buds. But the flowers will be very nice and it's still growing. Now here's the uh, uh, Angraecum vecchii. You know, this is just a single cross between uh, Hibernium and Sesquipedale and one which I'm not very proud of because I've uh, I've neglected it for a bit. Uh, had it out in the sun three or four years ago and this is what happens when you do that. You get that sunburn which you can't get rid of. You're just stuck with it until the plant gets so big that the leaf drops off. Now why I'm not proud of this is because with the neglect all the leaves dropped off and I thought I was going to lose it but what I did then was uh, I put some, uh, here I go again, bull's blood 
not bull's blood, dragon's blood on it and it stopped the rot because it was rotting and all the leaves were dropping off as you can see there. Another one, another plant that if you disturb it, disturb the roots, it can put it back years. And you can see here from where it's flowered from before, once, twice, three times there, and hasn't flowered since. But uh, I would say it's going to be a few years before this flowers again. Here again it's planted one pot in front of another in, and then into another pot. Roots aren't as quite as big as the crestwood. Uh, you can see it's in big bark there with all the roots. I mean, they're like pieces of steel, these, you can't move them. And uh, I would, if I was growing this again, if I got a small plant, I would definitely put it in a basket and a big basket and just leave it there and let it grow. That's uh, sesquipeda. Uh, it's not, it's vetchii. I'm getting mixed up this morning for some reason. I must have got up too early, I think. Now this is an Angregum sesquipedale. Uh, only a lot smaller than the other uh, two plants I've shown you. But it still stands 19 inches from the top of the pot. Uh, the leaves on these sesquipedales are a bit... Uh, they're not as straight and pronounced and parallel as uh, as the others. As you can see, they're, uh, they twist a bit and go all over the place. But exactly the same thing, this should be in a basket. And I might even experiment with this and put it in a basket. This has never flowered before. And uh, it is a flower inside easily. So I'll put it in a basket uh, this winter. And uh, we'll see how it gets on. Now this is a small Angraecum, Angraecum didderi, uh, tough as old boots, uh, grows very well in a large bark or a large charcoal, anything like that, but I, I keep thinking I'm going to mount this, uh, it grows out in the open I believe and uh, grows on rocks and things like that where it's, and it's exposed to very very bright light all the time and a lot of heat so what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to uh, I'm going to take it out and mount it you can see I've put it in a pot with uh, holes in to give it plenty of air but uh, and this is a beautiful flower when it flowers beautiful perfume off it as well see the nice large roots there which will uh, which will cling to a bark as I expect to mount so that's what I'm going to do with this one and I might show you it again once I've mounted it. That's Angraecum didderi. Beautiful little plant. Well, I'm back in the greenhouse now. I've taken this didderi out of its pot. And uh, I knew it had that uh, new growth there. But inside the pot was uh, another little one with no roots at all inside the pot. So I think this will do quite well. Uh, mounted. This is what I'm going to mount it on. This uh, this solid piece of wood here. I will just do two holes like uh, like Rick does, and uh, and fasten it to that, and see how it goes. Well, here's the dither. I have mounted it. Uh, drilled a couple of holes there. And a couple of holes there and just uh, fastened the roots on there and the base of the plant on there. Now if you remember I took this out of the pot because there were no roots actually growing into the pot and uh, that's a sign that if roots or any orchid are uh, growing over the top of the uh, of the compost and they're not growing into the compost then they don't like what they planted in so I'll try something different. So I'm very pleased with this, this is uh, nicely planted, it's got a nice flat bottom on so I think I can stand this up. There we are. That will make a nice display when it flowers. Well that's about it, thank you very much for watching. Uh, hope everybody's alright, I hope everybody's plants are growing well and uh, I hope they're not too cold this winter. Okay so until next time, 
I'll see you later. Bye.